and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged. And I'm here in Gothenburg in Sweden with this rather nice car. This is the Volvo V60 plug-in hybrid. Now, for years, people have been saying to me, why can't there be a hybrid diesel? Because their experience of diesel cars is they get like 40, 50, 60 miles to the gallon with a diesel engine. Why can't that be a hybrid? Well, it can, and here it is. This is a diesel-engined Volvo hybrid. The front wheels are driven by the diesel engine, which is in here. The rear wheels are driven by an electric motor with a battery pack above it, and they're all beautifully integrated. So this car can drive for 40 or 50 kilometers on just electricity. You plug it in overnight over there. It takes about three to five hours to charge it. And then you can drive for 50 kilometers without using any diesel. But then once that runs out, or if you're doing a long drive, then the diesel engine kicks in and it will run in, in hybrid mode, very much like a Prius. But it will also run in power mode, except it's not like that. I'm doing American power mode. It's not, it's European power mode. It is power mode. It is sensible power that will get you from A to B very quickly. This is still a prototype. It's still in development. It's being uh, uh, released into the market in uh, the, fall, the autumn of 2012. So uh, it won't be around that soon. But having just driven it, it is fantastic. Have a look what it's like inside. So inside the Volvo, it's very similar to ex existing models of this scale. So it's still got the engine at the front, the electric motors at the back, but you can, you've got so much choice. Effectively, what they're saying is it's three cars in one because it is a pure electric car for quite a long way, 40, 50 kilometers. It can be a hybrid. So you've got to think of that in it, so, same driving experience as driving something like a Prius. So if you accelerate, the engine is running. Uh, but as you decelerate, the electric motor in the back works as a generator, it, 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 it trickle charges the batteries. But of course, the batteries are, have a much greater capacity than something like a Prius or a Honda Insight. So you've got much greater range on them. So, that's, so basically, it's pure electric, hybrid, or power. And when it's power, it's giving you all the power from the diesel engine and all the power from the electric motor uh, to four wheels. So it's a four-wheel drive car. So it can do things like tow huge trailers. It can uh, drive on very uh, uneven surfaces, on slippery surfaces, on snow, on mud, because it's got four-wheel drive with traction control. I mean, all that stuff is really, really clever. So this is like having a beefy four-wheel drive Volvo, except it uses hugely less fuel. So what they're talking about, if you drive this carefully in hybrid mode and charge it overnight, you're getting uh, uh, well over 100 miles to the gallon. Well over. I mean, we're talking 150 miles to the gallon on average use. So over, let's say, a use of a month of commuting and a few long trips that is the kind of fuel economy you'd be getting which is unbelievable because this is a big you know comfortable roomy hefty car you have the key up there okay. right. you have to put in the key put slot put in the key slot uh, foot on the brake, brake and one press on the start so so that started the diesel the diesel yeah. engine has started and, and that is to uh, build up the pressure, oil pressure right. and to have the uh, diesel engine prepared. So that always happens, yep. whatever, right? Mm -hmm. so it's kind of it depending on temperatures and so on. Yeah. But uh, here you have an uh, important inst instrument. It's a, hi a hybrid guide. So the, the red bar there shows how much you request. Right. The upper part is uh, the combustion engine, mm -hmm. the diesel, and the lower part here is uh, the electricity. As long as you are in, in the lower part, you're running on electricity. Right, I'm with you. All right, okay. So if you now just uh, drive here after the speed signs, you could feel the... And that's pure, because that's got... I, I'm not sure if you're aware of that, Mike, but I mean, it's got mm. plenty of... Yeah. I mean, I'm being gentle on the throttle, but it's pulling up a hill now. is still just electric without any trouble. So if I make the red line go over that, Yep. middle section the, the diesel the, engine would start up yeah what is the top speed in EV mode uh, it's 100 if you stop here yeah. <laughs> I might slow down for the turn yeah it could be good <laughs> oh, hang on. Wow, that is Probably impressive that was meant to crash up there. <laughs> and let's not try and turn us into crash test dummies. Yeah. <laughs> that is a really interesting acceleration because it's, it's from, you know, it moves and then it goes and then it really goes. There's sort of almost three, it felt like there were three phases to the, mm. to the push. So many people have said, why aren't there diesel hybrids? Because mm -hmm. diesel engines use less fuel, blah, blah. Exactly. And I've assumed that it's the starting 
has always been the problem because they are generally harder to start. But mm -hmm. you've smoothed this out. Yep. That you're barely aware of it. I mean, once it's going, you're aware of it. But before it, I can't hear it starting and. Uh, that, that's a trick. Here. the car. Yeah. <laughs> that's taken some work. Yeah. So if we stop here, uh, okay. we could go over to the performance mode. You can feel some difference in the throttle mapping, right. and uh, so, so now that, the, so that the engine is that, and that would just run always. Like yeah. That. <laughs> you can continue. Oh, we continue up that way. I do that like is. that about uh, electric motors when they push hard. Yeah. It sounds like a little jet motor in the back. Oh, you, you could hear it in yeah. the back, you were aware of it, were you? We can go over to hybrid and then save for later. Yes. Yes. Once yes. You deactivate the hybrid. Right. So now it's a diesel. Right. And now it's charging the battery again. As, as well as moving you. Yeah. Right. And now this is right. interesting because the two times I've heard zero emission zone mm -hmm. is, is here, and I think talking to Peugeot, but I haven't heard governments discussing like zero emission zone so this is like in a city center there's legislation in the on the yeah we expect them we, to, to right. come we have heard about right. them but uh, uh, it's more like Oslo for instance the, if you have an electric vehicle you, you drive in the same lane as the buses right yes a month's fuel use would be what I'd be you know that's the one the difficult thing with these sort of vehicles is judging it from a short drive mm -hmm. like this. Yeah. But over a, like a month, then you can see, wow, look how many miles I've done to the gallon, driving mm -hmm. on the road, you know, using this as much as possible, plugging it in as much as, of, as often as you can. Yeah. That's when you can then get a picture of exactly. overall use, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's very hard on a short term. Because obviously now, you know, I can't imagine that you would, in city driving, you just wouldn't use the diesel, you know, you would use a tiny amount. You would, mm -hmm. If you were plugged in overnight and it was, you know, because yeah, it drives, it's, it's, you know, this is how fast you go in a city, very rarely this fast even. You know. No, it's powerful enough. Uh, and a really nice idea is that you can pull a trailer for 1800 kilograms right. with a car yes. here. Yeah. You, and you could drive in uh, low emission zones or yeah. bus lanes or whatever. So you make it convenient for the customer to use an environmental friendly car. Right. I then had a snoop at the construction of the Volvo C30 electric that I've driven in a previous episode. They're currently only making a couple of hundred of these cars to test them on European roads, but you can see from this that although electric motors are much simpler than fossil burning engines, cars are very complicated machines. Now this is where I get my gripe about the shorthand terms we use to describe fuel efficient or sustainable transport. Terms like eco and green strike me as being a little dubious when you think of what goes into making a car. I spent a long time going around the main Volvo assembly plant. It is amazing. It's state of the art. The cars they make last for years. They recycle everything they can. Their working practices are exemplary. 40% of the workforce in this factory are women. It's clean and airy in the factory. The wastewater is cleaned so carefully. They have fish living in the storage tanks. But it is still a big, heavy industrial process. Now, Volvo are doing very well at the moment. One of the main reasons is they are selling a lot of cars to China. What does this tell us? Well, I don't want to harp on, but the more the newly developing economies like China and India start driving more and more cars, the more we all need to find alternatives not only to the fuel we use, but to the way we make and use cars. I don't believe we can go back. We can't uninvent cars. People love the freedom they represent. But the more I saw of the factory, the more I was convinced that we have to start talking now about the problems facing us. I was impressed that people in car companies are doing just that. They can see what's coming. They know the future isn't the internal combustion engine. And I take my hat off to Volvo for trying anything different. <laughs>